guys, welcome back. I'm Felicia, and I'm Rowena. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about cleansing the face. Pretty straightforward, right? Take off the grime, take off the dirt with a simple cleanser, and you're good to go. Well, actually, it's not that easy, and it's not that simple because there are so many products out there. Have you ever walked through the aisles or go to stores, even when you're online, you see all these products, different types of yeah. facial cleansers to clean your face, to wash your face, to take off the makeup, and you're like, what are all these for? What is best for sensitive skin? What is best for oily skin? What is best for dry skin? Because let's be real, at the end of the day, all we want is for our skin to be nice and silky and smooth. And the first and most important step is actually cleansing. Because if you don't cleanse properly, you're stuck with the grimes and the oils that are just stuck on your face from the day. And if you don't really buff it away with a good cleanser, this is what causes acne, what causes irritation and inflammation on the skin. So today we're gonna talk about six products, how well they take off makeup, how well it cleans your face, how well they work, and if it can actually take off the day's grime mm -hmm. so that it'll prevent you from breaking out. Which product is the best? We're going to explore things like micellar water, things like cleansing oils, gel cleansers, cleansing bombs, cleansing soaps. bombs. All right, so before we jump in, make sure you've liked, make sure you've subscribed to our channel so every time we come out with a new video, you learn something new. And make sure all notification is on. Bing! Cleansing oil! This is my favorite one because I feel like with oily skin and a person who wears a lot of waterproof makeup, this is just one of those that work the best. So how does it actually work? Oils in the product bind with other oil-based residue that's on your skin, like sebum, SPF, foundation, and soot, which is like pollutants on your skin. Water-based cleansers aren't actually capable of removing these oil-based debris because, you know, oil and water don't mix. So what the cleansing oil does is that it will emulsify when it comes in contact with water on your face. And sometimes when you start rubbing it into the skin, it can turn into a milky texture and then can be easily rinsed off. And a tip to wash it off is with lukewarm water and not cold so you're not left with that oily greasy film on your face so people with combination or oily it's actually one of the best things that you can also use so this is how you typically use cleansing oils first you want to take one to two pumps of the cleansing oil in your palm and then you want to massage it in between your hands for a bit and then you want to really gently rub it over your entire face and what this is going to do is really slowly but surely break down every Everything. And I feel like if you have high coverage foundation, if you have a lot of eyeshadow, if you have liquid liner, it just really gently breaks down everything. And then once you feel like it's all broken down, I'll take like one swipe of water and then kind of emulsify it first. So if you've done it right, you should really feel that everything's off. So for the pros, oil cleansers effectively dissolve dirt and makeup without leaving the skin feeling tight and makes your skin glow. It also contains antioxidants and anti-aging ingredients hydrating and soothing the skin with essential fatty acids. Fatty acids! Fatty acids! All right, so the biggest con with cleansing oils is that it's not the only and final step once again. This is where double cleansing came in because this is the first step in the double cleansing process. If you don't wash it away after, you'll be left with clogged pores and things like under the eye that build up like milia or this could cause breakouts if you don't properly cleanse it away. So here are some cleansing oils that we love. There's the Shuomura Skin Purifier, the Bosha Makeup Breakup Cool Cleansing, and the Tatcha Pure One Step Camila Cleansing Oil. So naturally, following on from the cleansing oil is the second step of the double cleansing process, and that's using a liquid cleanser. So the three main liquid cleansers are gel cleansers, milky or cream cleansers, foam cleansers. So what are the differences between each of them? So for gel cleansers are typically clear and generally designed for deep cleansing effective at decongesting clogged pores, removing excess oil, and killing acne-causing bacteria thanks to their antiseptic and exfoliating properties. So it gives the skin a deep cleanse. If you're on the oilier side, gel cleansers are perfect for you. And pro tip, you can use it in the morning so that you feel nice and fresh and clean for the whole day. All right, so moving on to creamy or milky cleansers. These ones are really good for dry skin people because they are full of botanical oils and emollients that are there to nourish the skin because gel cleansers can be a little bit more stripping than milky cleansers, which are once again designed for drier skin. And for foam cleansers, they generally start out in gel or cream form, but when you press it out, it comes out as a foam. They can be a little harsh since they're 
made to slightly dry out the skin. So naturally, it's best for people with oily, acne prone, or teenage skin. So one of the biggest things that you want to find with liquid cleanses is what it's actually targeting or doing for your skin. So if you have acne, you have to find products with salicylic acid. If you have dry skin, you want to find ingredients that have more oils, that have more emollients, have more humectants so that it can draw moisture and leave the skin barrier really comfortable even after you have cleansed. So the only downside with these liquid cleansers is that some of them do contain harsh chemicals that could strip your skin completely bare of all the good oils that you want to keep there. So just be careful, be mindful, and read the ingredients to know what's good for your skin. All right, the liquid cleansers that we're both really loving and have both tried and tested is the Matcha Hemp Seed Hydrating Cleanser. It's a jelly consistency and it feels really good and leaves kind of like a tingling feeling on the skin. It just feels really like hydrating, but also another one is from Fresh. It's their soy face cleanser. And this cleanser is actually really gentle and can be used for any skin type, which is really good. The only downside is that it is a little bit more expensive. You can also find a lot of good ones in the drugstore as well. I remember for the longest time, I used to use a lot of Neutrogena, a lot of Clean and Clear when I had more like reactive skin and they do a really good job. Kind of the, you know, what it's supposed to do, clean away your skin and purify your pores. Moving on to micellar water. What is it? How does it work? And why is it everywhere? If you guys haven't seen the Bioderma bottle with the pink cap, where have you guys been? Because that's basically <laughs> what put micellar waters on the map. So the two essential ingredients in micellar water is the first one, water, of course. And the second is surfactants. What are surfactants, you ask? Surfactants are a molecule that kind of looks like a tadpole with a head that's attracted to water and a tail that's attracted to oil and grease. Normally, oil and water don't like each other and they just kind of sit on top of each other, but the surface of our skin actually has both of these substances. But the thing is, surfactants are actually happy in both water and oil, so it won't divide and it won't repel each other like oil and water normally would, and it combines together. Basically, just imagine when you put micellar water on a cotton pad, the heads attach to the cotton pad and the tails are pointing up ready to absorb oily makeup. So there's this awesome oil-loving layer on top of your cotton pad to dry out sebum, grease, and dirt, which are all oily or attached to oils. So this is perfect to use at the end of the day. So because it only forms that one layer of tails that are pointing up and that draw oils, you will need maybe two or three, depending on how much makeup you wear, to really get it all away. Some people can just end their cleansing process by using micellar water, but others can't because the surfactant skin, because sodium lauryl sulfate, for example, can be a strong irritant, but not all surfactants are made equal and some people don't react to it at all. So what we would suggest is that if you feel any type of dryness or itching or uncomfort, I would just kind of wash it away just to be safe. To you, soak a cotton pad with micellar water and gently wipe your face because because of the pointy tails, you actually mm. don't have to, you know, press too hard. Yeah. You can just let the micellar water to do the work itself and work the magic itself. Just hold it over your eye for a bit, and then this will really kind of, like a magnet, just draw all the makeup and the oils that are on your eye. And then after like five, 10 seconds, then you can start kind of massaging or even it. a minute or two. Yeah. <laughs> to let it fully dissolve so it's less rubbing and more just... If you have that patience. The good thing is that it's generally suitable for all skin types because it is very neutral and gentle. Anyone can use it. Also generally inexpensive, so you can go to your local drugstore. I think CVS or Duane Reed. Yeah. Most drugstores carry these fancy French brands now. The only downside of micellar water is you actually need cotton pads. Mm to be able to use it. You can't just splash it on your face and wash it off. But let's be real, who doesn't have enough for cotton pads? That's a worthy investment of $2. <laughs> yeah. Our recommendations for micellar waters are Bioderma Senso Bio H2O. There's also Derma E Vitamin C Micellar Cleansing Water and also the Garnier All-in-One. Facial wipes. This one's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much just disposable cloth soaked in soap, moist towelettes, soap towel, lazy girl's <laughs> best friend, but it shouldn't be. Think of facial wipes as something that does a really good job of smearing the dirt and the bacteria and the makeup just across your face. 
while getting off a little bit of makeup as well. So most towelettes or most facial wipes are actually saturated with a lot of cleansing agents and oils. Some of them have oils in them. And this is supposed to break down the debris and the dirt and the grime, all that's stuck in your pores. But the thing is, it doesn't actually take it away from your pores. It's the cleansing action afterwards is They're what actually washes it water. away. Yeah. This is how we suggest you use facial wipes. Use it to gently wipe your face. Be very gentle, especially around the eye area. Of your whole body under the eye is actually where there's no pores and it's the thinnest consistency. So it's most prone to Wrinkling. wrinkle. And also as you're wiping your face, remember your hairline and your jawline because sometimes that's where we can forget and that's where we will break out. So the best thing about facial wipes is obviously that it's super inexpensive. You can pick it up from any drugstore. And some of them say it's like for sensitive, like Burt's Bees has sensitive ones, more waterproof ones, which I guess have a little bit more alcohol and a little bit more oils in it to kind of break it down. So I guess you just have to find one that's suitable for your skin type. So for the cons, sadly, nothing in life comes this easy. Nothing can be this convenient and this <laughs> simple. And still be good. Yeah. <laughs> wipes contain preservatives, which are used to prevent bacteria from growing on the moist towelettes. And the chemicals aren't good for your skin. Alcohol found in wipes can also dry out and irritate your skin. Excessive rubbing can cause low-grade inflammation and lead to skin pigmentation and wrinkling. And here are some of the facial wipes that we've personally used and that we like as well. There's the Burt's Bees. I like the grapefruit one because I just love grapefruit. And Simple Skin Care is also really well known for their minimal ingredients. So there's nothing too alcoholy or fragrancy and it's just simple. And then there's also the Nutri Gina one that's in the blue packaging and that's also really good at breaking down waterproof makeup more than the other two I find. All right moving on to cleansing balm. So a lot of people ask what is a cleansing balm? To understand it really simply it's kind of the same as a cleansing oil but in a solidified version so it still has a lot of the botanical oils, it has antioxidants and it's a really soft kind of like a balm. But the only difference is that yes you have to scoop it out of a container with your fingers and then massage it on to your face and then that's when it kind of melts with the heat of your hands and on your face and becomes an oil. Would you say it's more heavy duty than cleansing oils? Yeah. So the best cleansing balms, supposedly you can use it, take away all your makeup, let it melt, do its magic, just wipe it off and then you're good. For the pros, cleansing balms do a really good job at removing heavy duty makeup and it simultaneously cleans your face, moisturizes dry patches and removes makeup and lathers your face with good oils. And it's perfect for winter time, winter time dryness. <laughs> I got that winter time, winter time dryness. So the ones that we love are the Arborian Solid Cleansing Oil, the Hamish All Clean Balm, and also the Pharmacy Green Clean. Good old bar soaps. Did you know bar soaps are a very controversial topic, they subject are. within the beauty industry? Team bar or team no bar? So the reason why it's kind of controversial is team no soap believes that it's unhygienic, it strips your face of pores because there's a lot of dry ink ingredients and that is just all around in fear to look with soaps. I think the general understanding is that it was kind of like an old age thing, you know, like a bar of soap for your body and it shouldn't be used on your face because it does have that effect. It's like <laughs> It like strips too much of your natural skin oils away. So there is a new generation of facial soaps that will keep your skin nice and fresh and clean and soft by using natural and moisturizing ingredients. But the biggest con for me, skipping straight to the cons, is one, <laughs> it's a little bit annoying to have you know, fumble through a bar of soap, either having it like, like how do you even put it on your vanity? And how do you put it in your shower if you are to use it like? It's just kind of annoying, but also I wouldn't say I would spend more than $5 because it's a bar of soap. True, but in defense of the humble soap, I feel like I need to defend it a little. I have been using this charcoal facial soap from Japan and it's actually mm. really, really frothy and hydrating and it does a really good job at taking out all the pores. So where do you put it? <laughs> on my face. Like, how do you store You it? put it on a dish tray, a little cute marble dish tray that I got from Target. Uh, okay. Yes, it can be a little more hassle, but it is more eco-friendly, it's easier to travel with, and it's there's zero mess. But how do you travel with it? You put it in a plastic bag like this. <laughs> this is said charcoal soap. <laughs> 
So the first thing to do is to wet your hands and then lather the soap so that you get the foam on your hand and then you put it on your face. Okay, and gently. I never knew. Do I just rub the soap no, on my face? No, no. That's why, again, it's kind of like using the foam of the lather to wash your face. So the two soaps we recommend, one is the Dove Beauty Bar. It's about two, three dollars. It's like the go-to soap. And the charcoal soap that I use is the Pelican De Tanseki. It is my favorite. So given everything we just said, the best way to wash your face is going to vary from person to person. So for me, I have dehydrated, dry, and combo skin. And what I found works best for me during the summertime is usually bar soaps. Mm -hmm. So the charcoal soap that I mentioned, as well as liquid cleansers. Mm -hmm. And then for the winter time, that's where oil and the balms work a lot better because my skin is literally parched <laughs> and dying. Okay, so for me, I have combination oily and sensitive skin. And what works best is Obviously, the cleansing oil, like I said back in that portion, it just does the best because I do wear a lot of makeup, especially when I film like today, um, and it just breaks down waterproof and foundation the best. And then I like micellar waters if it's kind of like after the gym, after a workout, it's just a nice kind of cleansing phase. But obviously, you need a good liquid cleanser. And my favorite is gel because I have oily skin and it just like feels nice. So I hope you guys understand more about cleansers. There is no right or wrong. It kind of is just working out which one works best with your skin and also personal preference. Like sometimes you just like the feeling of something more milky or something more frothy, kind of like shampoo. I don't like shampoo that doesn't froth and lather. But then the ones that froth are not the ones that are best for yeah. you because there's sodium so lauryl sulfate. <laughs> know your skin, know what you like, and then you can kind of find products to suit that the most. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions about anything, leave them below. Also, if you have any ideas about future videos, leave them below as well. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.